Okay. All right. So another welcome, intro well, lost the time. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Sunday night. We got a great show lined up. We're just got a couple announcements before we get started. Before we start our at Academy Day, uh, we're still taking donations for Gen Con in the down there part, and we are also still taking donations uh, for Extra Life, also in the down down there part. If you want to sign up for those, uh, regularly scheduled program this week, and also we've got uh, some new merch. If you want to check it out on the merch store, we've got the new T-shirt design up on there, or you can get it on whatever Redbubble's good for that. Uh, and other than that, I think it's time to fire up our cool intro. Just on the shores of the Desert River, just across the way from Golden Fields, there rests a lonely king. Welcome to the Mercenaries of Mischief. I am your benevolent Dungeon Master Puck, and I am joined today by these Mercenaries of Mischief, which I will now introduce in no particularly sequential order, starting with uh, the, the Cleric of Death and uh, frequent add-in to random parties, Miss Rolda. I am the Arbiter of Death! Also joining us today, cleric of Salune, occasionally a bear, and always headmistress, Miss Jildetta fucking not. Also joining us today is fiery songstress extraordinaire, Miss Lilith Singer, and the Breaker of Chains. Hello. This is going to be one of those things where like, the titles keep going on. I'm just going to come up with new shit for you guys. <laughs> and last but not least, silent and stalwart, the new kid on the block, Lucas. Bearer of no titles. Bearer of no titles. But uh, no, these things will come in time. So, when last we left our heroes, they had met up with one Regulus Koo, that's C-U, and he had taken them home and gotten the lowdown on all the goings on at Dragonspear Castle. He had what some might call a small panic attack oh, upon learning that uh, Tiamat, the chromatic dragon queen, has disappeared. Uh, vanished from her home in Avernus, and no one knows where she is. Uh, insisting that he had urgent business to attend to, with that knowledge, he transported the mercenaries' mischief back to Dragonspear Castle, where, thanks to the undead communicating talents of Rolda, they interrogated some corpses to gain some new information about what this mysterious Vakala Enna may be up to. And then they decided to just wander deeper into Dragonspear Castle, at which point the dead began to speak of their own volition. And we now join them in progress. So, just to party. be clear, yes. just to be, didn't just happen to wander in, okay? I was concerned. I wanted to know how many eggs they took. All right. Very deep personal thing for Rolda. So she was a little caught up in the moment. And then she ran into all the undead. <laughs> okay. That, like, it's, look, whatever your purpose is, it's fine. So, as you guys move, uh, through the fog of this place, you hear the sounds, the, the gasping, gurgling breaths and the rattling of armor as uh, all of these defeated foes around you begin to slowly move to life again. Uh, 
you measuring some distance? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. I saw the air. I saw the arrow, and I got distracted. Okay. I'm doing a thing. Bad right there. All right. Uh, so this has happened. They've all kind of sprung to life here, and I'm going to need you all to roll me some initiative. What? I did not see that coming. I had no idea. I didn't have my finger on the button already. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. All right. Oh geez. So that's that's how that's gonna go down. That's about where that is. <laughs> and let's see how these ghouls are doing. Oh dear, that's unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, you, you hate to oh, see shit. it, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, a bunch of people are in the wrong place, too. I'll fix that. Oh, no. Okay. So these guys are all going first. All of them, eh? Every single one of them, because I rolled for them as a group. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. This guy comes up. Swings his claws at you better. At the, uh, I have a 17. So. Okay, tie to defender. Yep. This one comes up, swings his claws at Javetta. Oh, let me just shrink this up. Ah, there we go. Claws coming your way. That's a, yep. Make a constitution save. Oh, get that Nope. All right, uh, you are paralyzed. Great. Also take seven slashing damage. Your mic's a little uh, low. Yeah, you're a little low again. But yeah, within 10 feet, I would say yes. Because, yeah. Did we get a long rest since the last battle? I don't remember. You did, but you also used Talk to Dead twice. I did. Okay. So that's the only one I'm missing. Right? So, sorry, he takes 10 damage? Yeah, add three to everything you can take feet of me. Okay. Yeah, I am sorry. All right, then. So this one's going to come up and try a claw, claw at Lilith. Claws. 19, Lil. Hits. That is seven slashing damage and make a constitution save. Con, 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 con. There we go. All right, you are also paralyzed. Oh, good. This is not good. <laughs> Can I use my reaction and cast hill thing? Or no, that doesn't work. Because I got paralyzed first. I'm not sure how this. Um, you could do it in response to the attack, I suppose. Hellish rebuke. Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay. Hellish rebuke him. Why not? All right. Hellish rebuke him. Okay. Uh, where is it? Why did it not show up? Where are you? I heard it go, boop, but... Yeah, I heard yeah, it, yeah. too. <laughs> it, it made the noise. <laughs> okay, I guess I'll cast it again. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, hit it. Way to go! <laughs> Yeesh. All right. Okay, did it appear That's this time? weird. Dude, What's I, happening? I'm going to refresh it, because it's okay. not showing up. I'm not on my screen, either. I heard not it. On mine. I can see an eight. Yep. And That's for my con. Oh, okay. That's so weird. All right, I'll just okay. let's just skip hellish rebuke. Just right, isn't happening apparently. Not, apparently, <laughs> you, you have no hellish rebuke. I have no hellish uh, rebuke. Uh, your peril. Sorry. Uh, have you checked on the screen, uh, sir, on the actual map? Because it's going to ask you what level you want to cast it on. That's what I was looking at, and I didn't see that either. Oh, that's weird. Weird. It's. I'm going to just close out and and get back on the thing again. Sorry, guys. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. We'll move to the next ones. More slashes coming uh, Lucas's way now. Yeah. All right. Claws. <laughs> nope. Okay. Second one. Nope. All right. Those two are not able to get at you. And then this last one goes up for little Roro. <gasps> oh, shit. 
<laughs> Roll to know. Wait, what sort of reactions do I have? I gotta see what kind of reaction. Here. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. I have a question. Yep. Thing it says if the target is a creature other than an elf or undead. <laughs> Hold on, I just want to clarify something. Uh, oh yeah. What I would. Oh. I mean, you you are a kind of elf. Ah, yes. As a reaction, when you or a creature you can see within 30 feet suffers a critical hit, you can turn that into a normal hit. Whew. Okay. Okay. Can you see yourself? It says, I can. I can't. Okay. <laughs> Send out dust door. Okay. So let's make this a normal hit. Whew. Okay. So am I actually not paralyzed also? Okay. Yeah. You don't get, you don't get to be paralyzed then because you yeah. are an elf. This is a question. As a half elf, do I only get half paralyzed? Uh, no, you get full paralyzed still, but nobody hit you, so don't worry about it. Just that. the left half. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that is uh, eight damage plus three, and roll the you to also make a con save. Okay. Con save. Eek. Roll the is paralyzed too. Oh my god. <laughs> Oldest parallel. This is three out of four. <laughs> Failed their con saves, but only yeah, you're an elf. Your elf powers work now. <laughs> Thank God. Thank goodness for that. Uh, okay, so next up, uh, we go with Jobetta. Okay, well, it's time for a little bit of this. You already know what's turn undead. Hello. Okay. Um. Each undead within 30 feet has to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. I'm just going to do a group one for these because there's too damn many of them. <laughs> That's fine. Nope. <laughs> um, so I think... <laughs> yeah, every single one of them is within 30 feet of me. So every okay. one of them is turned and has to spend its turn trying to get as far away as possible from me. Okay, that's, that's good, because so many of you are paralyzed. All right, uh, next up, we go with uh, Lucas. Yes, uh, and I'm totally prepared for this. I don't need to read anything to make sure that I'm doing something correctly. Okay, I believe that. You said that with such conviction. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to, as a bonus action, I'm going to cast Thunder Smite. Okay. Uh, which means the next attacking target I do gets an extra 11 damage. Okay. And strength save against two. Uh, the one to the north of me. Okay. Because I can only go one at a time. I don't have any AOE. All right, so he didn't make it, so he'll take that thunder damage. Yeah, uh, I also have to, sorry, I have to just need to swing this. And I miss with that, but I don't miss with the second one. Okie dokie. And is he still Hi. hanging on? Is it the same guy? Yeah, same guy. He is destroyed. Okay, cool. Then Move it Thank you. Uh, I still gotta fix that one. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I can't do anything else. All right, next up is Rolda. Okay, um, I'm paralyzed, so do I make a con save, or how does this work? Uh, yeah, you, you make a con save to see if you can get out of your paralysis. Hey! Do I you are no turn longer the paralyzed. Turn? Yeah, that's the end of your turn. All right, so that's Rolda. Yay! <laughs> last, uh, last up is Lilith. And also a con save in order to see if I can break break out, is what you said, right? Yes. Okay. Ah! Oh, you are still paralyzed. Can I do my bonus action, though? Still? You can't do any actions. You are paralyzed. Oh, I thought paralyzed just means no movement. Okay. No, no, you are, you are paralyzed. Restrained is no movement. Paralyzed is you just like... Oh. <laughs> oh. L Lilith the Tiefling has ended and Lilith the Mannequin has begun. <laughs> it's the freeze challenge. Yeah, this is the freeze challenge. 
Uh, all right. So at the end of all of your turns, there is a roar across the sky, and you've all heard this sound before. As the Obvious. sky, yes. As the skies darken. I wasted my damn. <laughs> An enormous leathery black wings blot out the sun. And the ground shakes as an enormous black dragon lands, crushing a few of the undead. That's fantastic. That was my kill. <laughs> I'm getting a strange sense of deja vu. <laughs> oh, God. Well, at least it's not giving bonus on attacks. And Vikala Anna steps off the side of it as this black dragon lowers its head to the ground and pulls out, pulls on his sword handle and it just decouples from the sheath. And as he lifts it high to the sky, a bolt of lightning crashes down into it and just stays as this arc of electricity sparking in all directions from the hilt of his blade. Wow. Wow. <laughs> and then he proceeds to cut down the one next to Rolda. Yay! I told you he was nice. And the dragon steps back onto this tower. <laughs> and these are all destroyed. All right. Back to the top of the round with ghouls. Uh, they got to be getting the hell away from me. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> ah! Ah, ah, that elf is scary. Hundred <laughs> percent. So they all run off in all directions, and that is their go. And we go back to the top of the round with Jabetta. Okay. <laughs> now that that's taken care of, um, how do I want to do this? You know what? I'm gonna do some dissonant whispers oh god not nope maybe not all right i'm just gonna roll it because it's trying to okay. all right uh, so it's wisdom saving throw okay and on a failed save 3d6 psychic damage all right and it is against two um, this one. Why won't okay. you? Oh, I had the wrong thing selected. This one. Okay. All right. Well, it's got no wisdom at all, so that's a two. <laughs> so that's ten psychic damage. Her. Still kicking. And it must use uh, immediately use its reaction, if available, to move as far away as its speed allows from you. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. Uh, seeing this, the black dragon uh, uses its second turn to fly over and devour it. <laughs> okay. That's fine. All right. Um All right. Let's Oh, actually, you know what? You Fuck. know, you know move. No, Do I'm not. Thing. All right. Bonus action spiritual weapon. Okay. Fuck it. Why not? No. Oh. oh. <laughs> oh shit! Look at that! Look at how spiritual that weapon is. <laughs> One. 
All right. Well, it doesn't die, but it does take that hit hard. Yup. Kind of stumbles to the ground as it's running away. Yep. All right. Next up, we've got Lucas. Yeah, I am. <laughs> nope, I can't move my guy. Oh, right, because I didn't assign it to you. Hang on. <laughs> Your mic is still really low, Lucas. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to assign something on it. Your token to you. There you go. Now you should be able to see yourself. Yeah, I'm just going to talk really close to the mic for a moment until I fix this. Uh, better? Yeah. Okay, yeah, good. A little bit. So I am going to, just with my nine live steal it, I'm not even going to bother with another spell like Thunderous Smite. I'm just going to attack with my great... Okay. It doesn't hit, does it? Uh, no, not that one. Okay. And this one does. That does hit. For an extra two damage of critical damage. Oh, that's funny. All right. You divine smite. Sure, smite him. Uh, for an extra, normally it'd be 3d8, but because it's undead, it's 4d8. All right, this animated corpse is obliterated. It is, you strike in with your blade and cleave it in half, and then there's this flash of holy light, and it is just evaporated. All right. Uh, after that, Wolda, make you, you got out of yours, so you're good. Yes. You can move again. Um, I this space seems pretty safe as my. I don't know where I'd move to. Um, I kind of don't want to get too far away from everybody else. Um, I'm gonna go climb up on Luke's back. <laughs> but first, <laughs> I'm going to, I guess, pop off a uh, uh, a crossbow shot at one of um, one of those there fellows running away. Okay, that that'll, that'll hit. Him. Hurt bleh. He falls down dead. Fantastic. And then I'm going to go hop onto Lucas's back, his buddy system. Absolutely. I am your backpack. One cleric per team. Okay. Oh, whoops. I tried to move you while you're moving. Okay. And last but not least, Lilith, uh, saved from paralysis. <laughs> Uh, mm. <laughs> <laughs> we, we need a hump number higher than 10. I have so close. no control. I've been pretty consistent with these eights. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any restoration spells. You're fine. I'm just having bad luck. I rolled basically eight three times in a row. Nothing's changed. Oh my, oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, <laughs> after that, uh, Vakala Enna moves up here and unleashes his lightning breath and destroys this last one. Like, I don't Fantastic. know. Like, I'm so confused by this. I mean, it sounds great. <laughs> but, it, but it's not. <laughs> All right. And we are free of combat. Am I not paralyzed? Uh, you're still paralyzed, but we are out of combat. <laughs> Make another constitution save. <laughs> I am screaming in the inside. <laughs> <laughs> but hasn't done anything because it's like, this is great. She, this is true. <laughs> you're, you're, you're somehow more paralyzed <laughs> than you were started. <laughs> oh my God. Never have I seen something so bad in my life here. After about a minute, you stop being paralyzed, <laughs> but you, I want to be perfectly clear. You don't save out of it. <laughs> it runs. That is a foregone conclusion. <laughs> That's like slowly I'm able to feel my fingers and just wiggle. Yeah. It, it's like Kill Bill. <laughs> wiggle your big toe. <laughs> oh, wait, crap. Someone in the there. chat just pointed out she's in, she's, she would have saved out of it. What? what? <laughs> I would have? Yeah, about twice now. Oh, because of your aura. You got to tell me about your aura, dude. <laughs> I forgot about it. Okay? 
<laughs> you, no, she wouldn't have even been paralyzed to begin with. I'm gonna give you a permanent aura. Like the right. it's gonna be great. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Uh, it, it's all on my stat sheets, but it's not on everyone else's. Shabetta, we can't hear you. You're talking, but we can't hear you. What's up? What? Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. I'm saying that uh, I like the idea that Lilith was, par was saved out of it, just faked it the rest of the time. <laughs> oh, that's like, messed oh, up. I would not. Oh, there's a dragon. <laughs> oh, that's pulling a Redan. Oh, yeah, that's pulling a Redan. I fear the undead that surrounds me. I have no idea where that came from. <laughs> You'd be like, ha ha, you all almost died. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's classic Accurate. Redan. <laughs> all right, so uh, the, the black dragon comes over and lowers his head and Bacala Anna gets ready to mount back up on him. Thank you. That's it. The hell was this about? These these soldiers gave their lives for a cause they believed in, my cause. It is it is an affront for them to be reanimated in this way, and it had to be rectified. Do you know Kalimbor? I really feel like you guys would get along. I am familiar with his teachings. I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble putting you on the spectrum of are you a dick or are you not a dick? <laughs> you saying that out loud? <laughs> oh, I'm saying thinking? that very much out loud. <laughs> Think of me what you will. <clears throat> it honestly makes no difference to me. Well, I'm really curious as to why you dis what it is that you disagree with so heavily about what the dragon cult was doing in the first place. He lets out a heavy sigh. He says, do you remember the first time you saw a dragon? Yes. Yeah. What did you feel? Were you in awe of it? Could you imagine what it must be like to be a being that powerful? Do you imagine how it must feel to be at the top of the world? I mean, no, I had a blood rage going on through my head and I just thought, fuck, we're gonna kill this guy now. I mean, it worked out, but, you know. The first time I saw a dragon, I was struck by the majesty of it. The first time I saw a Dracolich, I was disgusted at how that majesty was stripped away. Never take anything in this world that is great and somehow make it lesser. He says, now that if that is all, I will leave you to your business. How, how did you know that this was going to happen or were you just cruising around in circles? I knew it was going to happen. The fog that lingers here is a remnant of its former inhabitants. It has a tendency to reanimate the dead. Well, then why did you leave? Why didn't you just wait? I had urgent business to attend to. But oh, what kind of business? I'm afraid I cannot tell you, for I feel if I reveal my hand, you will all take steps to stop me. Is your plan basically just to put dragons at the top of the food chain and then do a whole, yeah, they're superior beings, we should worship them and all that crap? That is a hat on top of a hat, sir. Are you the reason Tiamat is missing? Tiamat is missing. Uh, now we told you shit. So they say. 
so they say. That is interesting. She's pretty big, though. I'm sure we'll find her. She is quite large. Mother of dragons. You can't be damn many places she would hide. So true. Maybe she's not hiding. Maybe she's in trouble. Well, wherever she is, I'm sure it's some dark corner. She'll reveal herself in time. Now then, mm. I... Thank you for not attacking me while I dispatched my men to the proper rest. I no hope problem. that we do not meet in combat again in the future. I do Wait. not wish to kill you, but I will not hesitate to do so. Wait. What? Your, your method, your goal. Do you not think it? <sighs> that everything should all just be equals rather than having a race be at the top. I'm sure you, you know how some races think they are at the top is not a pleasure for some of us who looked at us lower. You have been subjugated as well. I know that look. Mortal races have small minded goals. It is only in the face of true world ending horror that everyone finds a way to put aside their differences. What if that just sparks more hate, more separation, division? I'm sure if we have time to talk and think of a new method if you're looking for a world-changing norm. I'm not against it to have people be treated the same. I don't know how many times you've been around after a world-ending horror comes to your town, but people aren't always um, together. Sometimes they riot and loot because they get scared there's not enough food for everybody. I'm on their page. I'm more used to them scattering than anything else. Sometimes they start eating each other too. It's gross. Perhaps. Perhaps it all has to be burned to the embers. I suppose it is kind of a work in progress. I wish I could be as optimistic. Have you tried? Instead of going in this extreme, have you tried? Yeah, I was really going for the not blowing up towns part. <laughs> I have tried my life to live in this world. And the people who truly wield power within it only understand one thing, and it comes at the end of a sword, or in this case, at the fang of a dragon. You will see. I wish you would take my advice. I want you to survive. The new world will need good people in it to teach what is left and inform its direction. Have you tried just living in a different world? Uh, the ethereal is very nice. Um, the Feywild's a little weird, but it's fun. I've been what to a few different worlds. They have their uses, but I wouldn't want to live there. 
What if we can prove? Prove, prove that we can change. A city, start small. And that they could change. Can you wait? I'm afraid it's too late. I don't believe in too late. So here's the thing. Calibro is kind of about <laughs> balancing stuff. And when too many people die all at once, it kind of throws stuff off. And so he, he might not be very happy about that. And he can just like make people die sometimes. So something to look out for. I am prepared to lose my life. There will be no place for a creature like me in this new world. Oh, okay then. No. I know your type too well. You're too afraid to, you're not afraid of death, but you are afraid of living. Maybe I am, but I've lived long enough to know but it deserves a bit of fear. He's angry. It's not that he's angry. Oh, okay. I'm gonna cast calm emotions. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> and everybody took acid breath damage. <laughs> and everybody died. Except for Rolda. Who was using me as a who I was using as a backpack and was able to use my charred remains as a shield. <laughs> as you melted away to nothing. No, he actually uh he takes it. Uh the thing is he is calm already. Yeah. He doesn't seem that angry to me, Miss Lilith. I excluded you... Lilith from this spell. She doesn't like it when I do that. <laughs> you don't <sighs> he's not expressing anger on the outside. He's, I'm not expressing anger, that's all, that's on the outside. But deep, deep down, I feel the pain. I remember the hurt. And sometimes it bubbles up and I would love for things to change the way I would like them to be. And this anger is much more than surface level anger. This anger is a scar deep inside you. And you want relief from it. But you don't want relief from it. I tried to help. Mr. Blue Man, are you angry deep down inside? <clears throat> I am driven. But I apologize. I am afraid I cannot be polite any longer. I must go. Bleak Ma and I have work to do. Bleak Ma, is that the dragon? Yes. Bye, Bleak Ma, thank you. Uh, Jabetta says, how long? How long until your plan is in effect, in action? It's difficult to say. The process is, well, I don't want to say too much. It could be months, it could be weeks. Watch the skies. Bakala Anna, please reconsider. I don't want you hurting the new friends I've made who have proven to me over and over again when I've been in such denial over it. Then hold them close. Keep them, keep them safe. And let your strength 
preserve the weak. And he takes off. I want to have drinks with that guy sometime. <laughs> well, sounds like he's going to be dead at the end of all this, so I don't know that you're going to get drinks. <laughs> Yeah, you know, that really hasn't stopped me before. He doesn't well, the, uh, have to be. We can restrain him. Just um, trying to comfort Lilith without casting spells. He's just given up. <sighs> Miss Lilith, I think that he is going to have a very sad story. And we can try to keep him from hurting too many people, but I don't think that he is somebody who can be helped by us. And that is an important thing to try to know if you want to help people. That's what I thought years ago. Spoonie didn't give up on me. Even when I was being such an asshole to him. Did you ever start a plan to kill all the humans? <laughs> when you have nothing but time in your hands In a small quarter of prison. You want a thing that hurts you and anything related to it to just disappear. So I won't hide it. The thought has crossed my mind. Until I learned and experienced new things with you all. My world was much larger. And thank you all for that. The fact remains that you can't help someone who doesn't want to be helped. Why do you think it took you so long? It took you so long every day with us before you came to this conclusion. How long do you think it would take someone like that? No Time. Is beyond redemption. Time that we don't have. Maldon always used to say that friendship is the most powerful magic in the world. But he died from someone's sacred flame. So I think a sacred flame is the most powerful magic in the world. <laughs> he but had friendship, friendship is still important. did not block it at all. <laughs> did not help against that sacred flame. But friendship is still important. He's alone. He has bleak maw. He's alone at the top of an army. But he's alone. He flies around alone, apparently. Maybe we can anticipate where he goes? Well, if... Maybe you could be a pen pal. You send him messages. Do you Black know how to send messages? I don't. You can get scrolls for it. Blackwind was alone. And we still almost lost that battle. Blackwind was under a spell. Some kind of corruption. He made this it. This is different. He made a mistake that turned his life in a different direction. Yes, via magic. And my best friend died to save the rest of us. 
and we fight and we bicker, but I will be damned if I will lose you in this redemption challenge. Tear, coming down. Oh, this is adorable. All right, let's table this for now. We've got some more work to do. All right, Rolda, you wanted to count the eggs? Yes. Oh, I don't know if we should go in now. I just... I mean... I mean... if he, It sounds like he's not going to be mean to them. So maybe it's okay. It sounds like he, he really loved dragons. and He's not going to hurt them. But how many does he have? Don't know. But they're babies, and they don't grow fast. Yeah. Right? Does anyone know? Use magic. Can you do that? I don't know. Magic is powerful. Magic is the most powerful magic. (laughs) I look at Jametta since she's lived the longest. Like. Is such a magic like that exist? Speeding up one's time to age faster? Uh, I don't know. We'll do, uh, you want me to do it? I can do an arcana check. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that fuck, back maybe. Through. I don't know. <laughs> 200 years is a long time to think back through. <laughs> when Ragar, sometimes when he would get drunk, he would rant about chronomancy. Chronomancy! Cran all the people with the chronomancy. They're the ones pulling the strings. Uh, it's called something else now. Thank you very much, Matt Mercer. Okay. I've never seen it before. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, excuse me. I believe that chronomancy is a subset of dunamancy. Thank you. Oh, That's right. a good number. <laughs> 20. Arcana, that is a good Jimena. number. Look, arguing with. <laughs> Kalimbor. Yes, Kalimbor is like, thank you very much, Matt Mercer. Okay, anyways. Uh, so, uh, yeah, with that 20, you, you have heard uh, of spells and abilities to kind of advance time. In a, and, and certainly you've even seen this kind of thing, uh, this kind of time magic employed at the keep when you guys first arrived. There were barrels that were placed in a kind of temporal stasis so that the fruits and vegetables and things inside were would not spoil. Uh, you imagine that there may be similar magics that can alter the flow of time to speed it up. You were also stuck in a time loop once with a yes, wizard. That was also a thing that happened. <laughs> Wolf was there for that. Uh, yeah. There was also the weird timey wimey shit that happened with 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 the black wind thing where we were yeah. in, and there was like a thing. That uh, was like were... cross planar time though, I think. So was, yeah. I don't know if that's different. And then there was Groundhog Day. But that also yeah. might be a way to do it. If time passes faster in one plane than in another than in ours. Then you can just put the dragons over there, pull them out ten minutes later, fully cooked. Yeah, yeah. And other other planes and existences has their use. So That's fifteen true. minutes a pound, and they you know. like a big tree. And another plane, time could be different for sure. I mean, my father's keeping okay. me young. Um. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we can go in if you think it's can, safe. Do you want to care to Although walk? that guy seemed to know where all the dead people were. He, just, I don't think he would have just left more. He said he was coming to put them all to rest. So if you left, I think it's pretty safe to say that you got them all. No, no elaboration on that, Lucas? It's not... Elaboration? On the thing you just said about your dad. T- tell me more about your life, mysterious stranger. <laughs> <laughs> you or what? I don't. No, no. Okay. We'll get into it later. Right now, we have work. Uh, we'll put a pin in it. Don't worry. It's in my notes. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, are we entering in to see how many eggs are left? What would we... we can't? I Wait mean... a second. You have notes on me. 
Ooh. And she pulls out a notebook that's like stacked and there's like a tab that says there's a Kashano tab and a Lilith tab and a Lucas tab and a Rolda tab and like a Redan tab. There's tabs for everyone. Points. And yours is like a night a new shiny tab because it's brand new because you just got here. Yeah, the other one pages are all frayed. <laughs> One is like, because it was the first one, so it, it's kind of like broken and tattered. What is this you have there? <laughs> she like, she's like, it's my notebook. What exactly do you have on me? Your name, your resume. She's like transcribed your your resume that you put on the back of the poster. <laughs> Flips open to it, and it's like exactly what you wrote, but she just rewrote it. Lilith wants to be curious and be like, may I see mine? <laughs> and she flips to the the front, like, she flips to the front page and it says Lilith in, like, pretty pink letters. Oh, I like that. <laughs> and it's got, like, a crudely, a, she had Sharp probably draw the pictures in later over top of the crappy pictures that she had drawn. <laughs> so it's like, there's, like, a close, there's a really bad drawing of Lilith under it and then a <laughs> on top of it <laughs> this needs to be a merch now <laughs> <laughs> notebooks of everyone with doodle drawings instead <laughs> chicken scratch uh, handwriting there's like musical notes around her too. <laughs> oh it's like yeah but a little spoon okay. drawing of spoonie next to her <laughs> i got uh, adorable well now, so are we done here or more excavation to be had here? Uh, I say it's up to Rolda. Rolda's the one that wanted to go in. Uh, we've already gone through as far as I know and gotten everything. But we are here and we have a long journey back to the keep. It you know, might be good to know how many dragons he has. Wonderful. It's settled many? and right. just walks up to the door. Onward, Steed! And I click my heels against Lucas's armor. <laughs> I forgot that Rolda was on his back. It sounds like this. Quite. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent folly. Oh, yeah. I'm, right. fo I'm following behind, and I'm watching Jilbetta kind of in a, did she? She did. <laughs> there's a... <laughs> Putting yeah, it together. <laughs> like, there, there's clearly... I'm, I, I kind of wish I asked if I could before. I wanted to roll a perception check just to see if she made a face before she pulled out the notebook. Oh, an insight. Or, yeah. hmm. An insider perception. Yeah. I mean... But the time has passed. Yeah. Wow. This moment's over. <laughs> so uh, where do you guys want to look uh, in this castle complex? You guys have been over the main building. Uh, we, I just... Uh, we we kind of saw where where the eggs were kept, right? Didn't we see like an egg nursery? Well, you saw, a, you, you saw, saw a chest, chest with some eggs in it, but you didn't see anything that would be like a nursery or a hatchery. Uh, the only place you guys haven't been is two towers toward the back. Oh, all right, well, were, go there then. Were there additional chests in there or just the one with the bad eggs? They wouldn't just be the in chests though. Eggs. Well, that's where the eggs we found were. Yeah, the dead yeah. eggs, but if right. they were like good eggs, they should be like in some kind of nest that will keep them warm. Are you sure? I'm assuming from, you I... know, real life eggs. <laughs> them are birds. You can do that with with uh, reptiles do that too. They keep it in like, you know, in, you know, And these are, these are magical or... creatures. <laughs> Maybe you should do a nature check to see if what you think is correct. Me? I think yeah. you should, Rolda. <laughs> you it. You're the one oh. that thinks you know some shit. I don't. I'm a, oh boy. Let's see my. Yeah. Well, let's let's see what you know. See if you actually know it. All right. I'm going to click it. That's not bad. What is proper dragon egg husbandry procedure? 14. Well, it, it depends on the dragon. Uh, particularly black dragons, kind of damp, mossy, to kind of go with their swampy, swampy environments. Uh, green dragons occasionally lay their eggs up in trees. Blue dragons are a weird, complicated thing with the sand. Yeah, blue dragons, it's usually deep in sand. 
this isn't meta knowledge of stuff. I have I have too many books on just dragons and D and D dragons happen to be one of those <laughs> things. Um. Yeah, so just kind of leaving it okay. up to. Um, yeah, so let's go check the place that we haven't checked before. Rolda. All right. Rolda is going to be the, the leader and decision maker here. Uh, <laughs> I'm just imagining Rolda is pointing. There. Mush! Yeah. You didn't look in there yet. Yeah, just kind of leering over the shoulder so I can just see the finger pointing forward. It's like the little kid on daddy's shoulder that like nudge forward and be like, over there, yeah. over there. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly how it feels. So wait, where is it? Which one? The to towers at the back? What? Yeah, it was in the back. Yeah. Back, what, back right or something? Right. The two towers yeah. in the back yeah. in general. Let's go. Let's I'm going to yell out and be like, make just sure they're not trapped or anything. Climb on this rubble. Yeah, you can climb up that. Uh, inside here, like it's mostly a ruin inside this place. You can see the scars of an old battle on it. Uh, there, there are some, look, what looks like a place where people used to hold equipment and things that are different than the other ones you saw. Whoever had their stuff here had some fine quality armor sets that were placed on stands. Uh, and there's some, some really high end weapon racks left behind. Take it, take it, take it, take it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Good lord. The armor's not on it anymore, just the stands. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Sorry. Did you say really nice armor stand? Yeah. Yeah, I'm taking it. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna decorate his room. He's <laughs> carrying yeah. a coat rack. It's it's basically a coat rack. I mean, what else do you think I do at night? <laughs> yeah. Totally fine. Ooh, someone's hungry. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's awake. That cat he's has awake. never been fed in the history of time. <laughs> Did you tell? All right. All right. So uh, the other yeah, so that's, that's all that's in here. Okay. Then okay, right. so we'll go check the other tower. I'm just trying to see where the fuck these eggs came from. All right, so in that tower, there is a bed of thick moss kind of settled into what appears to be like a shallow puddle. Okay, cool. I want to um, check There is see. Yeah. also a chain attached to a wall. And like a just enormous uh, mankle at the end of that chain. There are also deep scratches in the stone floor. Oh, no. Um, oh. Yeah, so I want to check out this sort of swamp area to see if there's a, any distinct impressions of a certain number of eggs. Would this be like a nature or an investigation? Give me a nature check. They're both equally bad. So. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> That's better. Uh, this Ooh. this is what you would expect a black dragon nest to look like, although this is not the locale for it. Can I tell how many eggs were in there, though? Is most of looking like. uh, at this size, it could be anywhere between three and eight. His hmm. dragon laid eggs. Some of these dragon laid eggs. It's got to be Vakala Anna's, because that one's a black dragon. I mean, that's not the only... Black dragon, but it... yeah, but how often can you get in contact with those kind of dragons? I mean, I don't know. Still... They might have got the eggs from somewhere else too, and the, you're just taking care of them. Um, what I know with that check is it typical for dragons to lay black dragons to lay a clutch of eggs, or is it one at a time situation? And usually a clutch, uh, particularly with black dragons, because they don't expect as many to survive to adulthood. Black dragons are the weaker of the chromatic. Uh, but for what they lack in strength, they make up for in savagery. Do we know if the two that we found with the X's on them were black dragon eggs? They appeared to be black dragon eggs. Okay. So, hmm. we take the two in the castle looks like they were unviable six at most, probably, that he has. Can I do a nature check? 
long shot just to see what kind of gender his black dragon is? Sure. Six is a lot of dragons. Please, no more low rolls. I, I, I hope I got them all out of the way. Fingers crossed. Uh, all right, with the 17, judging from the size of the horns, it looked to be a male dragon. Okay, so his dragon got busy. All right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, because he had a bunch of dead things too. Did he live here? How long has he lived here? Because he may have found someone else that had dragon's eggs in here and he came to rescue them. Well, someone chained a dragon up here. Yeah. Chained a dragon? I mean, I see. Points to the giant manacle on the wall. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The color wouldn't allow a dragon to be chained. Most likely it was something for the baby dragons to feast on after hatching. Or somebody else had a dragon here because they knew it was going to lay eggs and they wanted them because you can kill a lot of people with a dragon. And he came to rescue them. And he killed all the people and some of his men died. And then that's why they came back to life. And that's why then he had to come back and save us too. I think he's rescuing a lot of people right now and the killing a lot of people comes later. So the question is, how long have they had this fort here then? Because if it's recent, then I can believe your story. But if they've always been here and that this is their place. Well, I mean, you see all this uh, stuff was knocked down on the big towers and stuff. It's probably knocked down by a dragon fight. Anything could knock down these towers. And just so you know, if there's change, Lil is just keeping an eye on the floor, just not looking at it or stepping out of the room or something, turning it around, yeah. just having her back at it. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of trigger items in here. <laughs> <sighs> Rolla has a flashback of being inside the egg. Something's picking me up. I seem to be moving. I'm hearing a voice. It sounds angry. It's going to be my new best friend. <laughs> <laughs> and a back. Um, the, you said the it had a necromantic field around the area. Yeah, it's this thick fog that kind of hangs over the area. So we buried the eggs. I'm assuming. Oh, that's right. I have. We them. should check on them. They're back at the keep. No. Nope. Bur- no. Nope. They're in my bag. No. <laughs> She's, she's just got them. Didn't, I mean, we didn't have time. The plan was to bury them, but we didn't have time with the whole Tiamat missing thing. Oh, I thought we did bury them. Yeah. Roll doesn't pay a lot of attention. Not important. Uh, so, she just pulls one out. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'm more curious. There's no movement at all from the eggs from, I don't know, a weird dead dragon dracolich ish scenario? Nope. Doesn't appear to be. We should bury these eggs anywhere but here. Oh, I mean, I wasn't planning to bury them here. I was going to do it at the keep. And then Tiamat came up missing, and then we... the... the big one. If you're worried about them coming undead, you should just... cook them. Is there a way to remove whatever is reviving the dead here? What, what is it exactly that's causing it? It's this thick fog that hangs over the area uh, as a result of when the devils and the demons were operating here. And it's it, it requires magics beyond your, your current capability to get rid of. The, people stronger than you have tried. Yeah. <laughs> But it's like, very generous of you to share this information. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of normal fog, but not this magical shit. I've tried that once before when we were in that Redan haze thing. Oh, don't remind me. That was a horrible moment. 
Roll to stop no. blowing at the fog. It's not working. It's fine. I, well, that's how you get rid of the steam. You can try. It's fine. <laughs> All right. So should we try to figure out what our next move, the next town, as we go back to back home or wherever we need to go to? I suppose. Damn it. I th- really thought that we skipped on this journey back home. Why are we carrying the eggs around, though? If you're worried about them coming back to life. They're just, they're, they're dead. They're just chunks of shell and goo inside. Sacred flame, problem solved. Hey, Joetta just puts the egg back in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna kind of turn the little one. Majestic creatures such as these deserve burials. But then that just means it takes them longer to turn into goo. And that's fine. Everything turns into goo. And I start to walk out of the door. <laughs> are you walking out or are you like grabbing the mane of the <laughs> outfit and just Oh yes, no, that's right. I'm still riding the uh, I'm still riding the, the Lucas. Yeah. That's the only reason I, Lucas told you to stop yeah. You were doing it right next to his ear. <laughs> Sorry. Isn't this like a feat for you to ride something? <laughs> <laughs> is, is there like a human riding feat? I don't know. I'm just going to give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> we call this, it's, it's the ratatouille. I'm yeah. At this point, like Lucas has it. Lucas does his arms like this so that Jill, so that Rolda can like. <laughs> <laughs> He's got one of those backpacks. Do you see? He's got like the, the standing bar and then the latch. <laughs> It's just a giant mane you climb up. Yeah. All right. Uh, so your cart is still there. A a rattled old horse is still attached to it. Nacol. Nacol's been around way too many dragons today. Um. So I'm gonna cast calm motions on the horse. Excellent. <laughs> Nac- Nacol accepts it readily. So I don't, I'm, I'm sure I won't need those spell slots for anything else later. No, no. Oh, are we going home? What are we doing? Are we? Yeah. Do you want to discuss it over in some bar, cafe, Daggerford room? Daggerford. We go back to Daggerford. I'm stabbing all of you. <laughs> but it's so close, and it's on the way. <laughs> oh, Lucas. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Daggerford's so cool. We should all go there. <laughs> <laughs> Daggerford. I mean, there's always that. Lilith, I'm being outvoted. Help me out here. You owe me for the horse. You do. Uh... There. <laughs> but then we're at a stalemate. We need to do something instead Nick... of standing here. Then we let Nicole decide afterwards. Wait a minute. I gave you the goggles. Oh, shit. Well played. <laughs> Where was the Forest That's of Worms a... again? The That's Forest north. of Worms is close by. Oh, God. Uh, Jobetta says, ah, as an alternative, um, we were told to check out the Forest of Worms. Uh, remind me again, why? Uh, one of the uh, dead friends of Rolda's told us to check out the Forest of Worms, as it is a green dragon, green dragon breeding ground. Also, uh, there were delicious berry bushes that you seemed interested in. I don't. Oh yes, yeah, oh for the wine. wine. Yep, that. Let's go get you some wine berries. I mean, <laughs> I'm we... down for that. Build more, some kind of economic stability for the keep to have a vineyard. Oh, I can see it now. <laughs> but a green dragon. Green dragon breeding ground. Meaning there'll be dragons. Mm, potentially. There will be worms. There will be worms. <laughs> so are we trying to find a green dragon? I'm just trying to follow up with going. <laughs> what we're doing when we get there. This was like today. 
we were told <laughs> we were told that um, there may be hints to his what Bacala Inna has been doing in the Forest of Worms. Remember the dead thing came uh, to life and it said Forest of Worms. So I just so much is happening and I. Uh, it feels like it's been a week since that conversation. <laughs> it feels like it, doesn't it, Rolda? <laughs> a. <laughs> uh, there is a small village that exists outside of the Forest of Worms known as Subar. Let's go to Subar. All right. Are they aggressive? Ooh. I'm not familiar with the green dragons. Yes, they are. Let's go. Subar. Yes. Okay. Um, Tell them it's a green dragon. Uh, Subar. Hopping on the wagon, I guess. Um, and <laughs> we'll spend the first 10 minutes of the trip uh, ritual casting, speak with animals, and then once it's cast. Uh, she'll tell Nicole, she'll say, hey, so we're going to Subar. Um, you may see more dragons today. I just don't want you to be alarmed. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I know. Her, her emotions are calm. <laughs> uh, I, heads up. I, I don't I don't love that, but I'm just so calm right now. You can <laughs> In Subar, right? Okay. Will there be, will there be hay in Subar? Uh, we will find some hay in Subar. This is important. That's we will. We will make time to find hay. Okay. And can I look? Is there any like loose hay in the cart? <laughs> no, no, no not, not not here. Do you have like a carrot? Uh, this Aww. this trip, I pull out from my bag of my small bag of mischievous holding just some hay waves a lot. <laughs> do we have stew buns? You do have stew buns. I thought so. I'm gonna eat a stew Co bun. Cookie packed you up with those. I thought so. What's the uh, any benefit from the stew buns? The benefit of the stew buns is one d8 of temporary HP. Dope. Plus deliciousness. Yeah, I'll do that too. Just to be safe. I will also do the same. In case we are assaulted on the road. God damn it. Nope. Nathaniel's coming out. Oh boy. <laughs> Still, two is better than nothing. So, there's no road. However, uh, you are right next to uh, the marshy land of the uh, High Moor. So you could like construct a raft and take that to the Forest of Worms. I don't know if we can build a raft that's going to carry the horse. Are we getting to... So wait, wait. Do we have to do that to get to Subar? Uh, well, you can, you can travel rough across the but I mean, it's it's going to be a longer trip. Is it possible to cast freedom of movement on a horse cart? <laughs> <laughs> on the horse, yes. On the cart, not so much. Uh, all right. well, that won't really help. Uh, let's see. How wide is this river that we could need to cross? Oh, it's a it's a huge body of water. Oh, like what are we talking? Like. Like it spans for miles and miles and miles of marshland. And this is a shortcut or we could go the long way around. Uh, it would be faster to travel by water than it would be by foot. Cause you have to, it's, there's no roads. So it's kind of rough terrain. Uh, Nacol could make it, but it's just going to take you longer to get there. Thoughts? I mean, I just sink. Don't, don't, don't sink, please. Hmm. There's a lot of palisades here that you could probably string together into kind of a makeshift raft. God, how long, that's going to take us the day. So do we want to spend time building a raft or do we want to just spend the extra time getting there? I feel like it's going to be the same. Uh, I think it's really a matter of do you want to fight Trolls or giant crocodiles? Trolls. Yeah. Okay, take the cart. <laughs> oh, God. 
Fine by me. Alright. 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 Taking the long way. Okay. Well, that's what we're going to do with the horse anyways. Yeah. We're going to bring the horse on a raft? Yeah. Feed it yeah. to the crocodiles? Yeah. <laughs> we can't do that to Nicole. Can't no. do Nicole dirty that's, like that. She's like one month away from retirement. <laughs> oh, she is. She is like one month. A little there. animal endangerment. <laughs> or at least we try not to. <laughs> All right. So <sighs> to run right to lead the cart next, right? <laughs> so hmm? I guess we're traveling until the river stops so we can get around it. Uh, well, you can travel can we along the edge of the you can travel along the edge of the marsh to get there. Just follow the most solid ground. It takes a long yeah. time. It's rough terrain. It's slow traveling. And since we're traveling slow, we can keep an eye out and get good perception checks before we get attacked by anything in the, in the marshy marsh. The best perception checks. So uh, how are we traveling? Who's driving? I guess I'll drive. Ooh. Anyone going right. to assist her? I'll sit near her. I have questions. Good, because uh, last time we tried to do this without anyone assisting, things ended up really woof. <laughs> it's fine. I also, because I'm still talking, I'm that one. Nicole in the meantime, so it's fine too. So it's like. All right. <laughs> I yes. just, so, well, hey, just if nothing crazy happens, just keep, keep along this path here. I, I will keep going. Okay. Got a got an apple for you later. There, there better be two. All right. No more, no more dragon trips, please. <laughs> We're going to Subar. <laughs> uh, after, after Subar, no more dragon trips, please. Okay, we, we, you, we're gonna, we're gonna train Al to take over for you. Can, can you, can you bring the fire horse next time we go to a dragon place? I think the fire horse likes dragons. It, the fire horse probably does, um, uh, but she um, she usually runs with the warlocks. So, well, I mean, Maybe. she she hasn't had a cart for a while, and it's not my place to judge a horse without a cart. <laughs> but I imagine there's something she could do. All right. Um, yep, that's fine. Uh, we're, like I said, we're, we'll, we're gonna. She can borrow my cart, is what I'm saying. I know. This you want wants to retire. You want to retire? I know. I get. <laughs> Rolls just sitting on the back of the cart, just kind of uh, bobbing her feet. And everybody lives until they die, and then they stay dead unless something goes wrong. Did did it did it do the Catalivora song. Well, that's gonna try to take a um, a nap. <laughs> you think it's a good song, Miss Lilith? I want to learn to to sing good songs, like you. Um. Hmm. Did you like my song? Um. Can you play it again for me? I'm sorry. I was just um. Yeah, sure. It goes. Everybody lives. Until they die, and then they stay died, unless something goes terribly wrong. It's the Calivora song. <laughs> I think that was pretty close. Bang. It's upbeat. Is it? And dark at the same time. It's, um... I am a it's complex very artist. unique, Rolda. Thank you. There it's you a mall know. edge. <laughs> <laughs> so. well, that's going on. Uh, what's up, Lucas? <laughs> Be straight. What do you know? She looks like to make sure that Lilith and Rolda like aren't paying attention. No, then it goes up because everybody's dead like that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is this song going on in the background. I, I, I just join in with a little bit of drums and I'm like, so everybody's dead. Is that how it goes? <laughs> like Lilith's sleepy voice too. So she's like, Lilith wants to go to bed. Rolled is doing a thing. <laughs> um, 
and she says she she says as as headmistress uh you had not yet revealed anything so i took it upon myself to learn some information um let's see and she switches over and starts speaking in elvish yeah <laughs> <laughs> And uh, she says, she says, I also know about your true birth nature. Not that there's anything wrong with that. And she like flexes her ears. Um, sorry, in Dwarvish, I reply, because <laughs> I know you can speak that as well. <laughs> It's just, just like mixing it up. <laughs> <laughs> so that no one can keep track of anything. Yep. Yeah. I've already said I'm a half elf. That's just how it is. Um, and she in Dwarvish <laughs> is over. Um, and she says, no one was really sure as you don't take your helmet off and that's fine. Uh, I did you should know, however, that I did see what lies behind the mask. And she's flipping for back and forth between Dwarvish and Elvish at this point. Yeah. Uh, I know you're a sword. <laughs> I, I look behind me for a brief moment. And I just kind of make sure the curtains or anything that, so no one can see me up ahead. And you just very quickly unlatch the helmet. And I just look at her. And you can see very much one eye is kind of ruined. The scar is there. Yeah. But as opposed to the brown hair that you saw before, it's just pure white. How old is Lucas? 46. Okay. This is stress. Okay. <laughs> Not my place to judge. And her, her, I'd say by this point, her like solid black hair probably has a couple of wisps of gray. Um, and she says, not my place to judge. She says, I know, I saw that you had been through some things. I saw that you have both been dealt devastation and dealt devastation yourself that's more or less accurate <sighs> story is a bit more of a have you ever heard of the continent of Aramisia no better heard of that <laughs> I don't know you tell me <laughs> You want me to do it? I can do a roll. Yeah, do a history check. Let me. T I'll tell you if you heard of it. It's an 11. Nah, you don't know. It. All right. She, You've never been there. She shakes her head. She kind of does that thing where she's like somebody like kind of lowers their head waiting for somebody to continue like to go on. It's far west of the Sword Coast. West. I got here on a boat via water. I got here on a boat to Waterdeep. There's a long, complicated story about this scar and this one. And he just kind of parts his hair and you see a large gash kind of along his head. But suffice it to say, I am the second son, but fourth child of the royal family of Aramisia. We're currently embroiled in a civil war. And my family are the bad guys. Well, I have uh, long discovered that just because our family are the bad guys doesn't mean we have to be. No, but I was. And I recount a few of the 
ghoulish horror stories of what I did. Uh, it's very, it's not a pretty conversation, really. And then I kind of just, and then I mention, I do, I do mention the god I followed. Uh, his name was Thrym. And I thought I was doing just and good things, but I was lied to by my country, my family, my God. I left them all. Most people think that they're doing the right things from their own perspective. That's what war is. A lot of people like to spout good and bad. But at the end of the day, it's just people. And the only bad are the innocents caught in between. Used to, I would have argued with you about that. I have had that argument many times. But the things I've seen over the past year or so have kind of changed my way of thinking about good and bad. It's also one of the reasons I think Lilith is right about Val. In some ways she is. I don't believe in beyond redemption. If it was, I would have died three years ago on my hand. Someday soon. Not soon. It'll be longer than that. I need to go back home. And I need to end the war. Are you the same person that started this journey? Well, I've been with you guys for about three days. I don't mean this journey with us. I mean, your journey. I don't think anyone's the same day to day. There's no way that the person that I was when I started this journey is going to be the same as the person that's going to end it or the person that is right now. I agree. All we can hope is that we're a little better than we were before and that we leave things a little better than they were before. Yeah. And right now, don't tell the others about this. It was never my intention. I only inquired to the mirror as the headmistress of a school. And as yeah. who is responsible for the safety and well-being of those there and those in this cart. Free standard background check. Yep. Uh, for what it's worth, um, based on what I saw and what I've seen over the past three days, I think you'll do fine here. That's good to know. But still, don't tell them. Not it's not yet. my do. Cut back to the where Rolda is now trying to uh, teach Lilith the song in Draconic. Oh God! It's a beautiful language. Most people I'm over smacking the drum. <laughs> I'm just, you feel better. I'm just <laughs> people overreact about the whole oathbreaker. There aren't many that are not horrifically evil. I, um, so you know. still a year ago, again, a year ago, different story, but as of today, I judge people on their actions. Yeah, just, I'm more worried about Rolda knowing than anyone else. Yeah, I don't know how. Yeah, she didn't like me as a paladin to begin with. I don't think yeah. me is going to sit well with her. 
Yeah. Lilith, however, if she were to find out some of the things, and she looks at him kind of like, she, she don't want to say it out loud, some of the things that she knows he's been through, but... The village slaughtering is a bit much, yeah. Um, and she says, but if she were to also find out some of the things you've been through, she would be on your side. I will be on your. I will. I will continue to be on your side, up and until the day that you threaten or harm anyone in relation to the keep in any way. I guess the same can be said about me to you. I like you, people. I don't plan on that changing. And she, when he puts the helmet back on, she says, "It must be nice to be able to." take that off every once in a while yeah you have no idea how difficult eating is i've seen a little bit of that um maybe you could talk with wendell gearstrip maybe he can make you something that can help with that the scar goes down to the corner of my mouth i don't think it's gonna work out just a thought a kind, a kind of a kind of feeder system that liquefies food and just deposits it on the other side of the helmet. I don't really like food. If I could, my <laughs> if I could, my diet would consist of flavorless beige smoothies. It's a nine nine reference for everyone watching. Excellent. Uh, so, as you guys travel, it, go, it goes deep into night. Uh, are you traveling all through the night? Or are you camping out? <clears throat> Last time we camped out, I turned into a horse. I think everybody here has dark vision, right? Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. I do. Oh, I have and like one of them can see 20 feet of it. Yeah. Maybe we just keep going. We're going to hit exhaustion, though, if we don't get sleep. Meaning we'll have disadvantage. Can we card sleep in shifts? I mean, that, rest, that could sure be a thing. It, it's like a road trip. Shift. <laughs> yeah, we can shift. You drive, I'll sleep, and then we'll do the next leg. I only need four hours, and I'm good. So, All right. I need eight. All right. <laughs> I've used up two first. <laughs> yeah, I've used, I've used one. So, JK, two. All right. Okay. So, so I guess you we're rest, I'll drive. Perfect. All right. See, so take turns uh, sleeping in shifts. Uh, Jabetta, before you get to rest, ascending comes through on the sending stones. <sighs> I'm like, I imagine I'm like, I'm like in my trance. Like, yeah, you know, you know when you're about to go to sleep and somebody calls or what? It's just like, God, damn it! All right, what's it? What's it say? It says, Miss Jabetta, we have received a message from your sister. And. And she wishes to meet with you in Waterdeep. All right. Can can you can you tell her that I'm in the middle of something, and as soon as I'm back in town, that I will call upon her. I will do so. Tell her I'm. Fuck it. Tell her I am very much anticipating a meeting with her. Very well. I will let her know of this. And Jobetta, like, as soon as she closes the connection, she's like, bitch. And she's <laughs> <laughs> like, like, sit back down in her pocket. And, um, and now she's like, and it takes her an extra, like, half an hour to get into a trance because she's like, want like what could she possibly want like we try try to have this kind of fucking this, this kind of angry sleep 
All right. So your journey continues. You guys sleep in shifts. And on your road to Subar, you approach Boyskir Bridge, which you just have to cross to get to Subar. And you can see it because of an enormous black statue that marks the entrance of the bridge from this side. And Lilith and Gilbetta, you recognize this statue right away because you met this person. It's a statue of Cyric. Fuck that guy! <laughs> We're gonna take a little break right there. <laughs> uh, she said. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> yeah, that's happening. We're gonna take a break. We'll be back in a little over 20 minutes. Uh, welcome back. When last we left our heroes, they were engaged in a long character development, uh, you know, road trip. After having an extended conversation with Vakawa Enna and his black dragon. Do we get enough much, to be fair. rest to get any benefits from that rest? I mean, you got, you, you can have your benefits of a full rest. You can have it. Oh, okay. Fantastic. Uh, and they have come to Boriskir Bridge, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly. <laughs> if not, that's how it's pronounced now. Then- that's, that's how it's pronounced in the world now. <laughs> so outside, uh, at the entrance of this bridge, there is this enormous black stone statue of Cyric. And he is pointing out across the bridge at the statue on the other side. And the statue on the other side, I'm going to need religion checks to identify those. Ooh, Rolda, you know. What? Mine was hard. Oh, it's religion. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry. I didn't see everybody's. Hang on. I'm looking at the wrong screen. <laughs> All right. No, sorry. Rolda doesn't know. Who does know? Jobella knows. Jobella knows. Yeah, Jobella is the only one who knows. For some reason, I saw it as a 19 on the other screen. I must have been looking at something wrong. Anyways, Jobella. Yep. The figure on the other side of the bridge pointing at the Cyric statue is Bane. Oh, good. I am yeah. this guy. I was born <laughs> in the darkness. <laughs> I was born in the darkness. Well, you, the I darkness didn't see the light until I was already a man. The darkness is your ally. I was born in the darkness. <laughs> we're, 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 we're just going to do Bane voices for the rest of the episode. Should I go <laughs> get my, my respirator mask? That yeah, yeah just do this all day. You'll have to imagine the flames, Batman. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Yesterday I broke the bat. Today did I break the man. <laughs> Does so, anyone have any talcum powder? This thing really chafes. <laughs> Are we good? We're done. Okay, yeah. This this is gonna be it for the next hour this, night. <laughs> yeah, this is the rest of the show. Uh <laughs> you know that Bane is basically the okay. god of of tyranny and hatred. Uh, Bane is a bad dude. He's generally favored by, like, you know, roving bands of barbarians, some tribes of orcs. Suddenly a sword appears in Rilda's hand. Yeah. <laughs> no? Okay. Oh. Meta shares all that. All right. Do we have to take this bridge? Uh, is, is there still a river place we can cross? <laughs> Uh, no, the bri- the bridge is the only crossing. Uh, there is a walled off kind of tent city uh, on this side of the bridge. Walled off tent city. Yes. Can but- I get my spyglass and see who who who's there? <laughs> you sure can. <laughs> If you peek around, you can see it's a bunch of uh, kind of small market stalls, uh, 
some merchant caravans uh, have set up uh, wagon circles inside. Uh, it's mostly travelers and traders. I like over there. <laughs> I mean, I'll that, be that's so better. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, clearly. You sure you don't want to kick god asses? Shopping's nice. Who doesn't like oh, to go shopping? Kicking. I mean, look, maybe we go, we buy some healing potions. Just in yes. Case. Oh, my mistake, my mistake. It wasn't Bane, it was Ball, the Lord of Murder. Oh. B-A-L-L? -L? Like Ball? Uh, B-H-A-A-L. Hmm, okay. <laughs> the Lord of Murder. God, <laughs> he's favored by murderers and assassins. Oh, boy. Good. It's my mistake, my mistake. Bane is something else. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jubera is like, oh, I mean, Ball, not Bane. Sorry. Yeah, yeah geez. Come on, Jubera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, not any better god of murder? <laughs> the lord of murder. <laughs> oh, lord of murder. So, are we about to enter place who worships Cyric? Fine, we should probably do the merchant town. Merchant tent town first, find some information maybe and then kick know. god asses. Maybe they know something. Yes. Guys, they're just statues. It's more than just it being statues, Rolda. We're about to enter possibly dangerous territory. Unfriendly folks. Healing potions. And potions that don't let you stay paralyzed. All right, well, no one can help. I can't help you there. There's nothing yeah. that was invented to help paralysis. I'm pretty sure you were pretending the entire time. No, I okay. was I can... not. Thank you. Lesser restoration does reverses paralysis, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. I... Okay. But well, we had a long rest, so I totally prepped that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, all right. I guess we head to town. All right. Uh, there's a large door. Uh, there are some guards watching. What kind of folks resides here? Uh, you're welcome to, to address them. Uh, hello. Uh, a, a large uh, gentleman in a very fine plate helmet uh, kind of appears over the edge of the wall and says, Hello! Uh, what what business do you have out in uh, Borskir Bridge? Uh, we were hoping to uh, buy some potions of healing and some other sorts of things. Oh, uh, I think we have a couple of uh, potion brewers in, in the trade camp right now. Ah, perfect. Uh, come on in if you're welcome to do business, uh, although prices are a little high here. It is the only stop between uh, well, here and anywhere. <laughs> Yes, it's, a, it's been a long journey thus far. Yeah, we get that a lot around here. I imagine so. Uh, he, the doors open up and uh, the, the man is there to greet you with a handshake. He's a very large, uh, muscular, older man. He's clearly uh, past his prime, but he gives you the impression that he's likely a formidable fighter. Is he like a giant, half giant, or something? Uh, no, he's he's human. He's just you know, he he he's like a tank. He's just built. Does he <laughs> seem big enough to be a half giant? Uh, no. Okay. I seem big enough to be a half giant. <laughs> Paul. He uh, reaches out a name. He reaches out a hand to you as he passes through the doors, and he says, "I am Barum Stagwinter." Ah, hello. Shabbat fucking not. Pleased to meet you. And pleasure to meet you as well. Me and my friend Theskill, uh, we keep the peace around here. We kind of, uh, we're kind of in charge around here, I guess. You don't sound so sure. Who is well, the other? I mean, it just started, oh, uh, Theskill's kicking around here somewhere. He's a cleric. He's a nice guy. Um, we just, you know, kind of ended up being de facto leaders of this place. There was just a lot of tents and a lot of caravans and things. And me and Thesco figured it would be a lot easier to protect everybody if we just kind of 
had a walled section for everybody to make camp in. And uh, well, we've been here ever since. How long has that been? Oh, a couple of years now. Oh. Why is everybody here? Are they afraid to cross the bridge too? Well, mostly just camping out you know, on the way through. Some are headed for Subar, some are headed for uh, Baldur's Gate. And it's tough travels, I mean, out in the Deadlands. Yeah, I imagine. Got the troll how, dang- how dangerous is travel around oh, here? I could- well, if you made it here from the direction you guys are coming, you come through the worst part already. Oh. It wasn't that bad. Any marauders we have to worry sticky. about after no, we cross the bridge? Just them dead and trolls. But, I mean, you've been through... Yep. The worst, the worst thing after the bridge is the dragons. Of course. Um, green, yes? Yeah, greens. They like to mess with you. They How so? They like to mess with you. Boy. Well... If you fought a black dragon, a black dragon will kill you as fast as he can see you. Right. But a green, a green will stalk you, poke at you, try to figure you out. And like then, a yeah, when you're most terrified, that's when they'll strike. Okay. Hmm. Playful little buggers. I imagine so. Do you have a green dragon specialist here by any chance who oh. go in that forest to, I don't know, pick up berries, let's say? Me and Feskel haven't been on a dragon hunt in years, but you're probably likely to find a few in Subar. Uh, there are groups of mercenaries that kind of run dragon hunting trips into Subar. We are currently, uh, the plan is to head into Subar. Um, We're interested. What do you know about the Forest of Worms itself? Uh, Green dragon breeding ground. A lot of young ones. Deeper you go in, the more powerful the dragons go. Only the younger ones are foolhardy enough to proceed to the edges. They don't know to fear any mortal races yet. They like to poke at them, see what's there. Do you know the history about that bridge with Sirik and... Oh. Ball. Ball, thank you. <laughs> Legend has it Sirik and Ball fought over the bridge. Uh, for the life of me, I'm not, I'm not much of a scholar, but I don't know who put the statues up. I don't Do know why know. they fight over it. It's not a very good bridge. I mean, it's nice stones, but I mean, it's not. I don't know if I yeah, fight a god war over it. It's just regular stones, though. Is I there have. a scholar here we can talk to him about this? Pascal might right. know a little bit about it, Stop but he's mostly into tear. See, Rolda, like the fight may not be over the bridge itself, but over control of the entrance to Baldur's Gate and the Forest of Worms. Yeah. I mean, they're gods, though. I didn't want them to just build a new bridge. They each have their own bridge. Okay, we're all done. So this is and nothing more than... happy. Rolda, gods have something called egos. They can be huge dicks about it. This guy gets it. Uh, also, uh, I, get the, I get the idea that you're not from around here. Um, don't drink the water from the river. No. That would have been nice to know three cups ago. <laughs> what? Lucas! <laughs> oh. What happens? Uh, it's not... Uh, it, it, it's, it's poisonous. Various things happen. Uh, result of the god battle. Ah, yes, of course. Thank Let- god I didn't actually drink Magics anything. and all that. Right? right. Ooh, that'd be yeah. handy. Get a couple of vials of those. I was just thinking the same thing myself. Wasn't mm-hmm. that a long time ago? Yeah, but I mean, it it sticks. I guess the I guess the Lord of Murder has some staying power. So is it just this part of the river? Or is it the whole river? Like, is it the where the water comes from? It is everything west of the bridge. Oof. One of the question about this water: Is it just something that will hurt you, <coughs> in if you ingest it? 
but touching it is also a bad thing. Well, I wouldn't exactly go for a swim with it, uh, but I mean, you know, def oh. definitely don't drink it. Okay, so just need to wash my hands afterwards. All right. Probably get nightmares. I don't know. What are you going to wash your hands in? Get plenty of those already. Almost endlessly. Anyways, do you have but coffee? If you're trying to wash the water off your hands and you wash your hands in the water, it's just never going to end. I think you need a there, towel. <laughs> there should be a couple things inside. You can create water. Okay. Don't worry about that. We got all kinds of caravans and stuff in here. Oh, thank you. I don't know uh, about you lot, but I could definitely go for some cup of coffee. We, uh, if we have any more questions, I'll be sure to come and find you. Yeah, check me out or Theskill. He, he's rolling around here. Look for anybody giving blessings of tear. Oh. <laughs> that, that's probably him. <laughs> of course. Hey, do you know any blacksmiths around the area? Uh, there might be a few inside. It's hard to tell from the caravans when they get set out. All right. I need a tune-up. Fair enough. Uh, all right. We will chat with you on the way out, I imagine. Yeah, sure thing. And uh, Jovetta heads into the, the city. All Get right. Coffee. Where's your I'm breakfast gonna, bar? I'm going to walk forward with Jovetta and I say, Mr. Jovetta, did you hear that? He said he needs a tune-up. I think he is an automaton. I've solved the mystery. Indeed, you may have. He's a warforge of some kind. Maybe. That's why he won't take off his helmet, because that's his head. Oh, the helmet is his... That's, that's pretty good. You can't take off your head. No. But then you wouldn't need to eat or drink. Are you saying this out loud? Are you, are you following us behind? Because you're going to have to do a perception check if you want to hear my whispers. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm saying this. So, so at least Jonathan can think about it, and hopefully Rolda will realize it. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, I, I spent the entire first half of this game not saying shit because Rolda wouldn't bother with it. Yeah, no, I'll do a perception check. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you probably hear that. Yeah. He's dropping. <laughs> yeah. We're still in a group getting in, so. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's just, yeah, but then I wouldn't have to eat or drink. There's a flaw in your Warforged theory. Mm. The gentleman doth protest to. You much. wouldn't have to, but maybe you want to. Have you ever seen food get stuck up in gears? No. Ah, but I will join in in this conversation and be like, well, what if the food is going through a very particular tube to go in a canister where it can just hold the water and food? Or what if it's going into a fuel tank and you burn it? <laughs> <laughs> can we see your belly? <laughs> this is quite amusing. So, like, he just unhitches a small part of it and you just see a scar across the uh, abdomen. Abs. Sorry. <laughs> Warf work on a on, on a war forge. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to tell <laughs> what race he is just from yeah. skin. From, from his from his abdomen. Because <laughs> a I, I, half is. elf would look would look like a normal human complexion yeah. of some nature, right? Yeah. yeah. But you can again, rule so a couple would, things out. Right. But then again, so would Kalistar and a bunch of other ones. Yeah. It wouldn't oh. let you pin it down exactly, but you could rule a couple things out. Orc, he's not. I want to go behind Rolda and like bend down to her level and t whisper to her ear and be like, try tickling his, t his tummy. Warforge don't get ticklish, I don't think. <laughs> and I back will off. reach out and try to tickle his tummy. There's, there's, <laughs> just, a quick, there's just kind of like a pushing the hand down. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna like figure that. you out, shiny man. <laughs> Lucas, a knowing look, just like, uh, what are you gonna do? <laughs> oh, and if you're at all paying attention, the inside of the armor is fur lined. Ooh. Ooh. Toasty. All right. Thanks. Really? <laughs> Extra warm. Soft. Super warm. <laughs> that's gotta, that, that's, wait, didn't you get real wet last time? 
Yeah, that's gotta be real to... smelly. Oh yeah. Is it moldy in there? No, no, but I do have little tiny air freshening units. Neat. They're like little runes. I don't know. Closing it back up. Air freshening runes. I'm gonna <laughs> shaped like pine trees. Is <laughs> <laughs> uh, that new armor kind of like a kind of think of it like a triangle, but at the with just a little bottom piece. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> Awesome. Anyway, coffee. <laughs> coffee. Um, I'm not allowed to have coffee. I get too excited. Any... Yeah, no, you have plenty of energy. You don't need it. So what's in here? What we got? There's all kinds of things. Uh, if, there, if you're looking for coffee, you find a couple places set up serving food that can give you some coffee. Uh, I need coffee. Well, it's... Well, it's been just nightmares, man. <laughs> All right, it is. So she needs some coffee. It is a gold piece per coffee. Worth it. You'll have seven. <laughs> and then, um, are we all separating and going our separate ways, and then regrouping later, or what are we doing? Are we staying as a There's group? lots of stuff here if you guys want to go shopping. I'm going to stop at the blacksmith right away. Okay. Because okay. I'm imagining it's going to take some time for them to. Tune up the armor a bit. Oh, for sure. I will go with to the blacksmith because buddy system. Yeah. Right. Stay with a little. Right. So, <laughs> like the helmet is relatively undamaged. It's the only thing that he keeps Do on. For the record, Jabana hates shopping with Lilith. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done shopping in forever. <laughs> oh, no way. I shop for the goggles. That was quick. <laughs> um. But anyways, good. Still back to the blacksmithy. Mm -hmm. Uh. Lucas manages to take off everything, and you just see kind of a weird shirtless body with a helmet and pants, and him carrying the armor over his shoulder. All right. So you do happen to track down a blacksmith. He's got a, uh, a kind of collapsible forge set up in an anvil, and he's doing some work uh, next to his caravan cart. It is a dwarf with a bright red beard and hair. Um, I'm going to say hello in both common and dwarvish. And I will hello say, there. And I will follow it up by saying hello in giant and celestial, just to cover some bases. So it's like, oh, God, and then, oh. <laughs> and this is what I imagine celestial sounds like. <laughs> unfathomable tones that shake you to the core yeah hello there uh, what an odd greeting so uh, yeah I don't know about her is, is it broke or did you want me to let it out or take it in actually taking it in a little would be good uh, but could you give it just a bit of a tune up there I'm noticing some squeaking and a few dents here and there. Uh, I could give her a once over for you. Uh, it'll cost you 15 gold pieces. Uh, if I ask you to do the sword too, how much would it be then? Uh, around 20. Deal. All right. Uh, name's Delgrim Blasthammer, by the way. Nice to meet you, Delgrim. Or do you prefer Mr. Blackhammer? Blast hammer. Blast hammer. Delgrim's fine. All right. Do you have anything else in your shop I can take a perusal at? Well, I got a couple things that I'm working on. What are you interested in? I'm looking to. I'm looking more to. I'm looking to both protect myself and deal a bit of damage. I see. What's your preferred weapon? Sword, hammer. Great sword. And he just Great swords. The... Hmm. Well, you've already got a fine blade here. I don't know how much I've got that would compare. It is well, a pretty great sword. It, it is a great sword. That is to be sure. What would you have in other weapon categories compared to it? Well... Maybe something in the longsword category? As far as longswords, 
I think I might have something else for you. Or what about just a pretty good sword if you don't have any great ones? There, there, Rolda. <laughs> ah, I've got a long sword of wounding. Uh, what is the breakdown on that long sword of wounding? The long sword of wounding can provide a magical wound to the target, causing 1d4 necrotic damage uh, each turn until the victim makes a saving throw of a DC 15. It can stack up to four times. So you do speak celestial. <laughs> and how much would that run me? That was all gibberish. <laughs> A sword of wounding. Well, I mean, something like this is a rare find. I'd need 1,200 gold pieces. All right. What do you have in the more manageable area? I don't have a lot of money. Haggle! Sorry. <laughs> more manageable. Well, in that case... Let me see here. I've got a silvered sword. Good for fighting monsters and undead. And that would be... That won't set you back quite as bad. That one's only 600 gold pieces. Okay. You know what? Could you just enhance the gear I have already? Oh. All right, let me fix it up and I'll see what else I can add to it. All right. Would an extra 100 gold be good for that? All right. I'll take the 100 gold and let me see what I can work out for it for you. All right. All right. And just hands you a bag of 120. Perfect. And he gets to work. And then I'm going to walk over and try to meet back up with everyone else. Okay. Uh, while this is going on, Lilith and Jobetta, what are you guys doing? Uh, I'm just looking for like a... Uh, he said be some potion brewers. Is there anywhere that looks potion specific? Potion seller. Okay. Yeah. Oh God, not that voice again. Are we doing this again? <laughs> <laughs> um, We're doing this again. Scott, you're welcome. I came from Schultz. Before we go off there, um, when Lucas walks out, <laughs> Rolla's going to hang behind him a minute and go, psst, psst. I, can you put, how much to put silver on his sword? Put silver on his sword? Yeah. Well, I'd say maybe another 50 gold pieces to cover it. Okay. So take out 50 gold pieces and hand it to him. It's a surprise. Will do. And then run out after him. Okay. All right. So uh, you guys do track down a, a potion seller. Uh, it's a, a, an apothecary shop. And it's called uh, Apothecary Leiden's Emporium. I was really hoping it would be Apotha carrying on. Apotha carry on my wayward son. <laughs> <laughs> and it's run by Carrie and her a wayward son. <laughs> <laughs> and, and his wayward son. <laughs> when, whenever, whenever he gets back, he will help run the store. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be rest when he is done. Okay. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> References. <laughs> All right. Hello. Welcome to my shop. Hi. Hello. Um, lovely place you've got here. Thank you. It's just temporary while we're on the road. Of course. I see you're new here then. I'm just passing through. This is a good place to sell wares to weary travelers. Yes, of course. 
Any uh, potions of healing you have laying about? Oh, I do have a few. You're in luck. Uh, and he directs you to a case in which he has six potions of greater healing. How much for them? Oh, well, these are difficult to come by out here. They would be 12 gold pieces each. Remind me, greater healing potions? 2d4 plus 4. So. Let's see. Um, 12 each. Mm -hmm, mm. Potential of a maximum of 12 hit points. Yeah. Minimum of 4. Tell me, sir, do minimum you also do trades? Well, that depends. What do you have? Something else that's also hard to come by, that is of value. May I see it? But of course. And I go and dig in through my bag, which is so that basically uh, has some of my like costumes. <laughs> so let's say like I, I pull out like a, a nice looking jacket. Ooh. Well, I mean, and he tries it on, and he's like a he's like a frail old wizard, uh, no beard, but like it's the straggly wisps of white hair hanging off of him. He looks like it sh he could probably use a hat, but he's not wearing one. And he puts on this jacket, and it's like, have you ever seen like a really old dude who maybe like used to be in a biker gang, and then he puts on the old gear, and it's just like, oh, that's like a corpse is wearing that jacket. That's what it looks like. <laughs> oh my God. So he puts on this spangly jacket that's just like hanging off of his ragged form. <laughs> well, look at you. Isn't the material lovely? It is by the finest threads you can find around. I, I look quite impressive, don't I? Yes. And as a shopkeeper, I'm sure you know that appearances are everything for your clientele's. Makes him feel more comfortable and can see you selling at least three times more than you normally do with these wonderful fabric that you have on. If you wish to keep it for yourself or to maybe to trade also to someone else in the future. I mean, it's the win-win situation, if you ask me. Well, I mean, this is pretty stylish. Eh? Um, do you think, do you think Meredith would like it? Yes. <laughs> no follow-up questions about who Meredith is or her taste. Just, just, just like, not just like, yes, hundred yes. <laughs> percent. All right. That and more, my dear. I am gonna need you to throw out a persuasion check for me, Miss. Oh, God, please, no more bad rolls. Look, bro, this jacket will totally get you laid. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> You're just so fly. <laughs> I like to imagine Rolda would walk in and just like, go, ah, skeleton! <laughs> I'm dead! <laughs> 16. Okay. Uh, he's okay. Yeah, he, he, you, you, feel like, you feel like he's buying it. So, well, I... My, my, my. I suppose. I'll push this even further and be like, if you're a free person, I would not mind having you having to get you a drink later if you're free. <laughs> well, I mean, his his like pale gray complexion slightly blushes. <laughs> you're not you're not sure if it's a blush. What? Or there's just like fluid collecting. His, his <laughs> face becomes bloodshot face. Yeah, yeah. It's just like <laughs> veins. You can see all the veins. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, I suppose with a trade of this, uh, I could give you the potions for half price. Good, sir. And I go over and give him a kiss on the cheek and be like, you have yourself a deal. Oh, well. I think I'll go buy 
Meredith's mixables later. <laughs> mixables. Lilith, you Lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just helping his ego, his self confidence, and whatnot. <laughs> it's fine, but why did you have to hit on him? <laughs> because that's also self, you know, boosting. <laughs> Even don't tell me that you never felt that whole like. All right, I didn't really want this guy to hit on me, but at the same time, it was felt pretty good to get that acknowledgement. <laughs> There's some self-esteem to that. <laughs> I've honestly never hit, been hit on uh, until I realized and acknowledged it until much later, and I go, "Holy crap, that just happened!" <laughs> It's like three days later and you're in the shower and you're like, oh, she hey. was into me. Wait a minute. <laughs> Damn it. Son of a bitch. <laughs> oh, boy. Every time. <laughs> so, so there are six of these potions. How many are you taking at your half price of six gold? All of it. Um, All of them? All of them. All right. You, you empty them out of potions. And he's just like, there's a mirror now, and he's like checking himself out in the jacket. <laughs> Seems fine. Ah, yes. 50 years younger. <laughs> it's, just, it's just horrible. It's a 60, I'd say. <laughs> Agreed. Um, any chance you have anything that's unique here? Well. There are a couple things I've been working on. Hmm, do tell. I have put together a couple potions of lightning resistance. I plan to make some trips to the desert, you see. Hmm, interesting. Where are you going? Perhaps I have something that may be of assistance to you. Um, nowhere that lightning resistance would be in particular, of particular use. Hmm. Oh, what would be of use to you? What else do you have? I've got a potion of mind reading. If someone buys that and uses that on me, they're getting punched in the face when I meet them in real life. <laughs> Pick that potion up for me. Do it. Oh, boy. Uh, of course, I've got a potion of animal friendship. Of course. Because <laughs> okay. Shana had a potion of animal friendship. I thought you gave that to Richard, didn't you? No, I gave him a collar. He didn't well, you gave the collar to Verdan. Uh, oh, wait, no, 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 I did give the potion to Richard. That's right. <laughs> Call it. it still exists in the world. Okay. Yeah. Everything. Uh, I gave it to, and I gave it to someone. Did I give it? I'm sorry. I, I broke us off on a tangent. That's my bad. I apologize. <laughs> Who did I give it to? Um, I also I, have I'm... a potion of clairvoyance. Hmm. What's that? Oh, it allows you to access the clairvoyance spell. This allows you to keep an eye on an area far out of your range of sight. Yes. Magical spy cam you can plant anywhere you've been. How long does that last? Oh, uh, let me see here. <laughs> let me check my things. notes. <laughs> let me check the file on this one. <laughs> well, I'm uh, going, while he's doing that, I want to like shuffle back and whisper to the like, just out of curiosity, are you trying to do a thing with the lightning resistance or not? I just want to know before I... Yeah, you're too eager. What are you doing? <laughs> Getting us deals? Dial back, dial back. <laughs> All right, if you if you know what you're... Okay, I will watch and see what you're doing. He's going to up the price. What are you doing? <laughs> I didn't say anything. That's why I'm just waiting to see what you're doing. Whisper, whisper. And whisper looking back whisper, at him and smile. <laughs> 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 Uh, of concentration the clairvoyance works for. Okay. This is, uh, beyond that, I do also have a, uh, a potion of climbing as well. Mm -hmm. I laugh myself because I'm thinking, like, don't need that. I got boots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm a bear. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I think we're both like being dismissed and maybe like, nah. just like <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm a bear just and I can fly, so fuck that <laughs> shit. But I don't see, I don't, Rolda can like, Rolda climbs on Lucas, and I don't really <laughs> Lucas a desire to climb. So. <laughs> and if we start falling and Rolda is still holding on to me, hopefully she can let open her wings. Yeah. And both of us fall to safety. And Look at that! We got safety precautions. So it's fine. <laughs> Apparently not. Nope. Only, only someone my size. <laughs> but Lucas doesn't know that, so we're rolling with it. <laughs> <laughs> Lucas yeah. isn't planning on using it. A very disappointing on using it. Very disappointing <laughs> moment when we both die. <laughs> oh, Rolda could have lived, but Lucas insisted she hold on now or something. <laughs> Ouch. All right, so what are we doing? It says, oh, that uh, that clairvoyance potion could be useful. How much is it for that one? A uh, potion of clairvoyance, that is going to set you back uh, 40 gold pieces. Mm -hmm. It is a third level spell, of course. They actually say third level spell? Of course. Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> You talk the, about what level things are? The people in this town are super scientific about the adventure Le thing. Level levels of wizardry knowledge. <laughs> the, I mean, the the uh, blacksmith was telling you all about attack bonuses and shit. Oh, so. uh, no, no. Uh, Look, that's why I didn't do it in the character god. voice. <laughs> the voice of a god uh, came to Lucas and told him all the information he needed. Yeah. Oh, you hear it too? <laughs> yeah, I wish it'd shut up. <laughs> Some gods get a little chatty. <laughs> um. Let's see. All right. Um. Yeah. So, Jobet is like forty. Hmm. And she kind of starts looking at other things. Yeah. It's kind of browsing around. Yeah. I'm gonna try again on this guy's good side because I'm just like waiting on Javetta to make her move and I'll be like, so tell me more about this lady you're interested. Oh, uh, Meredith runs another potion shop on the uh, caravan. Uh, Meredith's mixables. Oh, what kind of things does she sell? All manner of potions. Some people say that she is a witch. I would never say such a thing. I think she's very nice. Shame on them. Assuming so. Uh, certainly, she's a uh, talented apothecary herself, and I think the two of us could collaborate on our work. Of course. I wonder if uh, and other things. Does she have? Does she have better deals than you? Well, 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 well. <laughs> Cer certainly not. Oh. Hmm. I may have to find that out for myself. Uh, and uh, and Zubata's just gonna kind of nod at Lilith and walk out. Just, if you're going, tell her about my new jacket. <laughs> I wouldn't want to spoil the surprise. I will follow suit and just be like, so are we going over there to see if they have lightning resistance? Cause, damn, that would be helpful. I know it would be really fucking helpful, especially with this fucking Vakala in a guy fucking around. <laughs> <sighs> so, what, do you want to check out the next shop and see what's going on? And, oh, you know what we could do? Oh, we should set them up. Lord knows what kind of deals we can get that. afterwards. I would love to ignore the Forest of Worms and spend the next three episodes <laughs> playing out this parent <laughs> I will do it. <laughs> <laughs> I can we do that, do please? Yes. Yeah, that sounds like a lot of fun. I'm so I bored. love Roller these would love players. <laughs> Could we all meet back up at this point, considering we've all been to a store? Uh, look, you, I imagine by this time you guys have tracked them down while they're on their way to Meredith's Mixables. Yeah. Skinny, shirtless, 
You got to go. Well, he's not skinny. He's a big blue elf he's, and a he's, pink he's, tiefling. I'm sure we stand out. <laughs> he, he is built like a brick house. I imagine. Have you seen the Rick and Morty episode where they go to like the Mad Max world? Yeah, yeah. The dude's just got the bucket on his head the entire time. (laughs) Thank you. All right. So I guess while we're on our way, we run into them or they see us. Yeah. Uh, It's just kind of like, um, we're doing a thing. Uh, It's fine. Just roll, play along with it. And um, gosh, I hope you guys are very charming at what you do. Yeah, and, uh, charming. That's definitely something I've been working hard at. What was that guy's name? Leiden. Okay. You are so nice. I was about to say, like, I think I need to do a history check to remember his name. Because <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. Two minutes ago for them. <laughs> Lydel. Okay. Lydel? Leiden. Leiden. See, I was I still messed up. I'm typing it in chat. Typing it in chat, you guys. Don't mind me. Leiden. <laughs> there you go. All right. Okay. So, Meredith's mixables, uh, her caravan is, it, it's fully contained, but it's built to look like a small cottage, and it has two enormous wood carved uh chicken legs dangling down by the wheels the baba yaga yeah it's it's basically built to look like a baba yaga house <laughs> i grab onto the two nearest whoever's close to me no 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 <laughs> oh we're not in yet or are we inside you no, know, you're outside. You just see it, and it's got a sign that says Meredith's Mixables, and it's built. And it, this this cart has been modified to look like a Baba Yaga house. <laughs> the house will eat you. I, I want to go to see if there's some kind of jewelry um, place. I'm buying some jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing like, this. <laughs> this is where we need. We're gonna go here, but I'm gonna go find a jewelry place first. I, I got something going on with this. This is this is not random. It's all connected. <laughs> I'm going to go to the jewelry place as well, see if I can get something for 180 gold. Yeah, that's a good idea. Don't go in there. The lady that lives in that house, I've seen that house before. Very scary. Uh, You do find a jeweler. Uh, He's got a number of different uh, simple rings, uh, coppers and silvers, uh, some of them in some of them in gold. Uh, Very rare. Uh, There are some, there are two gold uh, rings with uh, a jade imprint of a bird or a jade jade carving of a bird set into them. And then there are uh, a number of simple silver rings, uh, a silver necklace that has um, some, some, uh, what am I thinking of? It's got some sapphires set into it in the design of butterfly wings. Hmm. That sounds cute. Okay. Um, looking at the items, I'm looking at the shopkeeper. Hello there. Hello. Is any of this magic or is it all just pretty? Well, I mean, a lot of it's pretty. Some of it. Oh, of course. Uh, What are you looking for? We're open. You know, one of those, when we see it, we'll know it situations. Oh, of course, of course. Uh, I've got uh, a couple of nice rings, uh, nice animal designs. Oh, I've got this one. He pulls one out uh, and uh, the ruby quartz uh, done up in the shape of a rose on mm. a silver setting. Is it, a ruby, is, it a, is it a ruby or is it a quartz? R- ruby quartz. So it's quartz with like a pink tinge. Oh, okay. Oh, it's a rose quartz. So he's not trying yeah, to pass it quartz. off as a ruby. No, okay. no, not trying to cap. Thank you, Steven Universe. I know, I know gems. <laughs> <laughs> Steven Universe, learn about friendship and mineralogy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's very interesting with scientists. With the nuclear physicist, if they screw up, black hole. Uh, chemist screws up, potentially deadly virus. Geologist, they screw up. Rock that was on the table is now on the floor. <laughs> All is well in the end. <laughs> All is well in the end. 
Um, so yeah, uh, I guess. So magic qualities to these things. Uh, tell us. You want, if you want rings of magic qualities, I have a few other things. I have uh, a ring, various resistance rings. If you're uh, going into anything particular, uh, I also have. Uh, let me see. I have a ring of warmth. You know, if you're if you're going anywhere cold, keep you warm. I think I'm good on that. Uh, honey, I'm always hot. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've got a, a, a ring of jumping. I'd like to look at the crappiest, dingiest looking ring. The crappiest, dingiest looking ring is this. It, it looks like it's encrusted with rust, but on closer inspection, it's actually some kind of grime surrounding it. It appears to be like a simple silver ring with some kind of signet, but it's all obscured. Hmm. I'm going to pick it up and just ask about it. Oh, that's one. I came across that in my travels. I decided to keep it and put it on display. Figured it might mean something to someone. I haven't been able to clear the gunk off of it, though. It's stubborn stuff. Maybe try magic? Well, I've tried a couple of magic spells on it. Uh, well, prestidigitation, that kind of thing. It doesn't seem to work. Almost like it needs some kind of special solvent. Mm, whistle whip. Uh, how much for this one? Oh, for that one? You could have that for 10 gold pieces. Sure. All right. Good luck finding out what it means. Mystery. Um, in the middle of this, going back and forth with jewelry and whatnot, I want to casually slip in like so been to other shops around here we just came from Leiden's actually oh, old Leiden yeah. poor lovelorn fellow I see you know yes he was a necromancer back in the day but now he just runs his potion shop interesting the necromancer back in the day hmm. so love poor guy doesn't have a neck the romance <laughs> So, what exactly, where is he at, you think, that he's standing in with this woman that he's so entranced with? Oh, Meredith. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's been after Meredith for a while. He's, How is uh, she responding? Well, I mean, she's, she generally, it's, she, Meredith's hard to read, I guess is the best way to put it. I mean, she doesn't dislike it, but she's just, she's kind of an odd bird. Oh dear. Is she a witch? Well, I don't think she's actually a witch, but she kind of plays up the whole witch thing. She says it's good for business. Is her real name Baba Yaga? No, that's part of the show. Are you <laughs> sure? I'm, doing an I'm, check. I'm pretty sure... She's not Baba Yaka. <laughs> yeah, you, you. Am I you feel uncertain like, that he's lying? You, you feel like. <laughs> yeah, I guess you, you, you can derive whatever. This you is want definitely from that. Baba Yaga has taken a new name and settled <laughs> down in this tent encampment. <laughs> <laughs> There's no peddling potions under an assumed name. <laughs> in the shittiest host disguise. <laughs> I got a score to settle with that witch. I don't know who's next to me, if it's going to be Gibetto or, or Lucas, but I'm going to whisper and be like, maybe it's best she doesn't enter that tent. <laughs> um, so you said she's hard to read. So you're not sure what her likes or dislikes are? Well, I mean, she likes a lot of different stuff. I mean, she's, she's always collecting items for potions and things. And I think the biggest problem is just Lydon doesn't have the confidence to carry on a conversation with her. I mean, mm. Mer yeah, have you met Meredith? Soon. Well, I'm I mean, sure. 
Go ahead. I've met wall. Baba Yaga before. And she's a bitch. <laughs> she's not Baba Yaga. <laughs> but Meredith is a lot. She's got a she's got a big personality. Oh, I like that. Has she ever been in your shop before? Well, she doesn't. Well, she doesn't come by the odd time. She wanted me to make up something with bat wings, but I told her like. You may like it, Meredith, but I, I can't sell. If I make a bunch of bat wing rings, I'm not going to sell. <laughs> is the oh, thing. So, so you never made a bat ring. I can, ring? Look, I, 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 can, I can do a commission, but it costs more. And Meredith wants to argue with me about the price, so I'm. I got a business to run here. <laughs> oh. mm. Do you have anything close? that resembles something uh, like that? I Maybe, maybe- I could swap out the setting for one of my bird rings and I have some spare obsidian in the back. I could mock something up. Wouldn't take any time at all, but I'd have to charge for the work. How much? Something like this, 30 gold pieces. 30 gold pieces. This is fine craftsmanship. Not everybody can carve a bat wing from obsidian. Yes, but this is for a couple, possibly in love, that could maybe faded together. We just need to give them a little opportunity. So haven't you ever been in love and try to find that opportunity to talk to that loved one? Give me a persuasion check. <laughs> <laughs> I love how the rest of this game became setting up these <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He's like, okay. I suppose I've, I've been in love before and old Leiden, maybe he needs a win. I believe he does, my friend. I just... I just don't want to think about the two of them together. They're both really weird. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. And I pat him on the cheek and be like, if there's anything I can do to help with this, let me know. I'll I'll do it. I'll do it for the flat price price for the ring at 15 gold pieces. And I'll throw in the labor for free. Do you need anything that needs any kind of insignias or anything like that. And I precipitate like something with like a little rose shape on it. Like, will that help speed up the process if you need to etch in something? No, oh, right. God damn it, here, mm -hmm. just give him the gold. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, <laughs> it's a small price to pay to set a trap and destroy a vile fiend. <laughs> Rolled up, we have to talk about benefit of the doubt sometime. Well, no. I don't see any benefit to doubt. Faith is where it's at. <laughs> <laughs> now, good sir, you were saying you have rings of protection. Is it like protection against elements? Or oh yeah, I got not? you know, good, I got uh, necrotic resistance, uh, radiant resistance, psychic resistance, uh, poison resistance. Anything uh, against paralysis? Does being, a copper cobalt, does being a copper cobalt uh, give me acid resistance? No. Okay. <laughs> I want to know that before we go into the forest of green dragons. Yeah, no, you're, you're not. Uh, green dra dragons are actually poison. Oh. Black dragons are acid. Also good to know. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm thinking of copper dragons. Huh? Completely full on my attunement stuff, so there's really nothing. Unless you guys find something that you want to put in your attunement slot here. <laughs> Or wait until we're in Waterdeep, do more shopping, got a decent price. <laughs> I'll wait till Waterdeep. And yeah. I also want to check up on my armor before this episode ends. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, it's already that time. I got to set these couple up. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, we can keep doing this next episode. We can do this as long as it takes. As I was going to say, this is a three episode arc. We're parent tracks. No time limit. <laughs> In it. <laughs> this, is, this is the next six episodes do now yeah this is where matchmakers <laughs> AK, sir aka the love machines 
Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> You're all assuming Roldo won't kill this woman before you get a chance. <laughs> yeah, it's just like Roldo is 100% convinced that this is Baba Yaga. It's just like a funeral world as swinging blades. <laughs> you hold her. It was just going to be uh, Lucas like grabbing her by the bat, like scruff of the neck and just holding her in the air. Are you like taking her, her to away. the blacksmith shop? <laughs> I have magic. <laughs> Fable flame. <sighs> so oh, no. Yes, Baba Yaga killed my second party. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> and you're still alive, ain't that something? Roldo's always alive. <laughs> yeah. Roldo's the one who lives. As you go to the, are you going to the blacksmith to check on your stuff first? I'm gonna go to the blacksmith, yeah. Okay. So as you guys split up again. Lucas, uh, are you traveling by yourself? I guess so. I'm sticking with Lucas. Man. Okay. All right. Well, now Lucas and Olba, you see a red half dragon wearing similar armor to the Kala Enna. And he is followed by a procession of what appear to be elven women wearing white cloaks with their heads bowed, following close behind him. There are four of them. There is a quick grabbing of Rolda and slamming into the tent to kind of, no. kind of slamming our backs against the tent. Just to look and because I don't trust that those women aren't clerics or nuns of some kind that so can just <laughs> sniff me out. <laughs> What's wrong? I'll explain later. Right now, just... Let's not be seen by those nun ladies. Do you think they want to smite you? Something like that. I can go As... check. Do you think they'll smite me? As they move past, they're loaded up into a cart. Do a perception check. Okay, I was gonna say, I wanna see, um, I was gonna ask to do an insight check to see if they seem like they're there voluntarily. But I can perception check. I think right perception one. check is perfectly fine. Roll that. You see as they're loaded into the cart, there are chains around the ankles of these women. And we're going to stop there because that's the end of our today's show. <laughs> Thank God I still have one weapon. <laughs> we're going to kill somebody. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, so that was interesting. <laughs> so. What an episode. I love that I just created this apothecary dude who had like this romance story. You guys latched onto it and made it the thing. Uh, how would like, we not? In the middle of saying it, I'm like, I wonder if they will. Yeah. <laughs> I just like, to latch onto this and do this. Yeah, this is this is your this is how you roll. Thank you so much for joining us. This is how we rolled up. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are currently taking donations for a Gen Con run later in the year. We're also taking donations for Extra Life in the Down There part. If you like what you see on the show, please feel free to give us those follows. Following's free. And uh, check us out on YouTube. And uh, we, if you like the episodes and want to keep up, you don't have time to watch YouTube. We got episodes on SoundCloud as well. You can download them and listen to them audio only. Uh, yes. They're available on SoundCloud. They're also available on Apple Podcasts if you search for absolutely. Mercenaries and Mischief. You can get it. Um, if you're looking to backlog, catch up. Put it on like one and a half or two times speed. You know, just to yeah, approach it. Um, those, they don't hit Apple Podcasts as consistently because we've got a lot of shit going on and none of us are podcast specialists. So it's kind of a <laughs> bonus thing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They come up. Uh, also, uh, you know, Check us out on all those things. If you want to keep track of us, you can check us out on Discord too, where we like to discuss things going on in the show, share art, and just talk about Dungeon Dragon stuff in general. And we also have a Patreon. At the first tier, you can get uh, cool little bonuses. You can watch fun little videos that we don't put up anywhere else. 
and you can see extra content that we do for after the shows. And at the top tier, you can play in a monthly game with me as your dungeon master. So if you'd like to see, uh, you know, what's going on uh, when I run a game for people, uh, you can hop in on that and be part of our story, be part of our world. Uh, other than that, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, you have a thing? Tell me about yes. your thing. It's more just I realized, and I kind of want to share with everyone, uh, if Redan and Rolda team up again, they will technically be Rock and Rolda. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Put that this, on the list of shirts we're going to make. <laughs> rock and Rolda. <laughs> With like sunglasses down. Right, and the like, suits. Next to yeah. you back, Like it's a, a buddy cap team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a buddy cap cover. All right. So thank you so much for watching us today. Tune in tomorrow because the story continues with Too Many Warlocks. Too Many Warlocks is set in the same world as this. And they have their own ongoing story. Uh, it's all intertwined and connected. Uh, so definitely tune in for that. And tune in on Tuesdays where you will see Gilbetta in her alternate form of Miss Alice. Uh, in the Deadlands campaign. And it might get spicy next episode. We'll see what happens. Uh, <laughs> really no. Who really can say? Who can say? Who can say? Usually yes, welcome to the spicy. era of hot young Baptiste. Usually it can only get spicy when Willie comes around. But that's fine. <laughs> Please go on and the spices stay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stay tuned for the raid, folks. Stay tuned we'll for the raid. Spice we can Until next time, class dismissed. Pete's wife said, This is getting out of hand. Bring back our dog, or the song will never end. Down, down, dairy, it's the unicorn and fairy, and the giant and the dragon and the hippogriff song. He polymorphed the hippogriff to the dog once more. Oops, oh no, cried Pete the polymorpher. Down, down, dairy.